Hi, everyone. So glad you're here with us today. I'm Samantha Steepleton, uh, Director of Services for the Will Rogers Foundation. And I am joined here today with Yesenia Perez, an, another LCSW in uh, private practice. And um, we're so happy to have you here today. And we're going to talk about suicide. That was the topic of the month because it's it's Suicide Awareness Month. We want to talk about it and um, I was thinking today the three goals. We'll just have like we're we'll kind of get a conversation going, but we'll just do the three goals are to create some hope and provide hope for people, um, to normalize the conversation, and then maybe even if we get you know just about reducing some of the shame around yeah. suicidality and and talking about it because I think that's one of the big issues that I hear is that people are embarrassed about how they feel. Um, or embarrassed to like talk to somebody about it or to even reach out if they see somebody. So um, yeah, definitely. That's a really big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll just, we'll just go from there and see, see where it takes us. Sounds great. Yeah. I'm happy okay. to be here. Yeah. We'll jump in then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's jump in. Well, I mean, the hope thing I think is really important uh, for people to hear. I think we get overwhelmed whether ourselves, like if we ourselves are feeling uh, suicidal or having suicidal ideation, or maybe we're working with somebody or a family member's having it, there's this feeling of overwhelm, which can lead to feelings of there's nothing I can do or a, a sense of like collapse. Um, yeah, yeah. I think uh, uh, that's a really good point that these are, these are feelings, these are passing moments, right? And so often, kind of jumping back and forth to the normalization part is that it's mm -hmm. very common and often when somebody has these thoughts uh, just like these low points and feeling suicidal it's happened before maybe they've had this feeling or like this passing thought in the past and something that I would remind you or you know anyone out there that's mm -hmm. uh, that's struggling with this is that if you've had it before how did that come to pass, right? It was a moment. It somehow mm -hmm. did pass. Right. And like, what what happened? What did you do in order to get past that moment? Of course, we know now that like you may be having it again, right? So maybe some of those things that you did that helped mm -hmm. you out that last time can work this time too. So yes, like there is a way out. If you've had those thoughts before, you can do this again. You can get past that moment, those feelings again. They're feelings. They're not facts. Okay. Right. Something that's another, that's another, little, yeah. another little tip or trick that we like to do. This, yeah. this is just a feeling. It's not a fact. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean that it's true. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really good reminder because I think a lot of times we, we attach to our thoughts and then um, we can go into those kind of those downward spirals where you just start to feel worse and worse because you're following the thoughts. So we'll talk mm -hmm. a little bit about some things that people can do to help themselves come out of some of that. And you and I started talking about that, like the basics. Um, yeah. So maybe we should jump in because we are, we're starting from the beginning, like the basics of like uh, getting enough water to drink, eating meals at regular times um sleep is a big yeah. one uh, like it's, it's such a it's such a big deal right when but it's also such a basic need that we some, sometimes overlook it right that mm -hmm. are have we been getting any kind of movement right there so the, the basics you started to name them are you eating are you sleeping are you drinking water are you getting movement Right. Those mm -hmm. are those are the main things. And right. they often uh, like one affects the other. Right. Like if you're not really eating enough, then it's going to affect your sleep. Right. Or if you're not moving a, a sufficient amount throughout your day. And mm -hmm. I notice I said movement, not exercise. OK, so just like moving your body. Right. Mm -hmm. So that, that can also affect your sleep. So we want to make sure that we go back to the basics before we try to implement any other coping skills, any other things that like a therapist might might suggest, because I'm sure that, you know, you've heard that you can do meditation, you can do mindfulness, that you can do breathing right. techniques and, and these other things. But in that moment, in time of crisis, 
we really are not going to remember those things unless it's something that we've been practicing. So taking it back to the basic things is the best thing you can do. So food is really the easiest one to implement mm -hmm. here to to have uh, some kind of snack. And what I do, even just on a normal everyday basis, is I always carry a snack with me because you never know, right? Like you mm -hmm. never know. You might get caught up at work and you didn't have a chance to go have lunch like you had planned or whatever it is. So I carry a little protein bar with me at all times. And just just because, just because I might have been caught up, right? Or there might have been traffic on, on my way to dinner or there might, you know, whatever. There's always mm -hmm. something that can come up. So definitely yeah. carrying something around um, protein bars, not necessarily the ones that are meant for like bodybuilders or things like that, right? But, uh, but just like a, a little bar that has something mm -hmm. that will sustain you. And yeah. then the other part is um, incorporating when if and when you are feeling uh, suicidal or down or just like in a negative thought spiral incorporating a little bit of fruit juice so getting yourself a little pack of fruit juices like the kids juices right just a little bit nothing that's gonna completely fill you up but just something to get your blood sugar back to a normal mm -hmm. level uh, because it's very likely that your blood sugar has dropped and we want to send a signal to your brain telling it that you're okay and mm -hmm. sugar will do that so yeah, yeah juice those are and a little protein. Those are great. And then the two things I want to kind of add in there to kind of like hold the juice and the the protein is one, you learned awareness at some point where you learned like, oh, if I eat a snack, okay, my mood, it doesn't change what's going on around me. Like the problems I have are still there, but the way I engage with them might be a little bit uh, more manageable if mm -hmm. I, if I have eaten. So I want to encourage everyone out. The other thing I want to say, not encourage, but to say is that we're talking about finding awareness here. So mm -hmm. if you don't have an awareness, like it's not to the, 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 the idea isn't the snack is going to solve it. It's that you have the awareness that when I'm lacking protein or when I'm lacking enough food, I get out of balance or my thoughts spiral a little bit more, or I get more overwhelmed. Um, yeah. And then the other thing I was going to add was um, that I was thinking that it, it, it's the awareness and then it's also like kind of like the action that we do. So like if you're watching this and you're feeling, um, you know, pretty steady about things, these are things that you can look at when you're feeling that way. Like, right. oh, okay, okay, things, things are all pretty solid right now. But let me notice like, oh, I noticed that if I don't get enough sleep, we could go to sleep. Like, that's a big mm -hmm. one. Um, yeah. They've done some studies on psychosis, and we can become psychotic in three days if we do not have sleep. And that's mm -hmm. the average person that doesn't mean somebody who's, you know, has mental health okay. issues or whatever we want to say, it's all of us that we're susceptible to these um, basic needs when they're not being met. Yeah, that's a torture strategy. Right, it like, is, yeah. It so is. like, let's not do that to ourselves, right? Like, let's right. try to get some sleep whenever we possibly can, right? So like, mm -hmm. get, I mean, I would say at least seven hours, but if if it's not possible, right? As Set yourself up for success. And mm -hmm. yeah, sleep is one of those things. Um, going along with what you were saying, right, that it builds awareness is that, okay, so maybe the snack is not going to fix the problem. Um, and maybe taking a nap is not going to fix the problem, but it might just get me to be able to call my friend, to be able to call, you know, 988, to be able to call someone to get me some support mm -hmm. and kind of build up my, my network that way of, of people that can help. Mm -hmm. Right. It, it, it's, it's something that can support us, which is mm -hmm. what we we do a lot with in our intermission discussions. You've been with us before, and we've talked about like things we can do to support ourselves, whether we're the person who's experiencing it or we're the person that is intervening or aware or have people in our lives who are um, suicidal or depressed or anxious or any of those. It's, it's to give us information so that we can um, add it to our own toolbox. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes it might feel a little bit 
awkward to call someone and and say hey you know what i'm feeling a little suicidal right now and that might be a really big overwhelming statement to make just randomly make to your friend so Mm -hmm. um, it is perfectly okay to call a friend and say hey you know i need a little bit of a distraction you know like what have you been up to today can you tell me something about what's going on in your life so you don't necessarily even have to talk about uh, feeling suicidal in that moment uh, Mm -hmm. but changing kind of the the tone of of what's going on for you that day can be helpful and then also keeping that person in mind if you feel comfortable calling a friend then when you are feeling okay or maybe right now right after this you can take a moment to tell your friend hey you know I sometimes have these thoughts is it okay if I have you on, you know, we don't have speed dial anymore, but if I have you on mm-hmm. speed dial and, mm-hmm. um, and give you a call the next time I'm feeling this way, not so that they can fix things, but that so that you can tell them like, hey, these are some of the things that do help me. Can you remind me if I call mm-hmm. you and I'm feeling this way, can you remind me to go have a snack? Mm-hmm. Can you remind me to, you know, whatever, like your list of, of different things. And that may be just enough to get Mm -hmm. you feeling okay right Mm -hmm. to get you to feel okay to leave the house and and, you know go get some additional support from a a professional right a therapist or someone else Mm -hmm. so that can be the biggest support it's just having a friend or family member or someone that can say hey did you do x y or z already like just checking right Mm -hmm. and that may be helpful Mm -hmm. Yeah, it it reminded me when you were saying that too, about like, we're probably doing some of these tactics, like at the beginning, you had asked like what worked in the past, and distraction is one, it's a temporary fix, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, if there's, if you if you are having suicidal thoughts, there is help available. And we want to keep saying that. And um, we'll put some resources in the notes where you can where you can call. Um, But that there's things that we do, because we you know, a lot of, a lot of people out there have survived a lot of different things in their lives, a lot of difficult times. So there were times where they knew like, oh, I, I'm going to watch a movie or I'm going to do this other thing and distract myself. Um, so and yeah, that's an amazing movie. tool, right? The, the movie or like a show having your go-tos where, you know, you know, like I'll rewatch an episode or two of friends when I just want to, you know, distract myself for the day. And I I know I don't have to think about it Mm because I know what's going to (laughs) happen. It's nothing Mm -hmm. that's going to surprise me. So, you know, finding some of these tools that are helpful for you and and, uh, can make you feel a little bit better, even if you've Mm -hmm. just had a long day, right? So even if you're not Mm -hmm. having suicidal thoughts, it it can be helpful to Mm -hmm. apply some of these tools. But yeah, yeah, definitely. It is more common than, than we think that people have these thoughts. Right, so right. like it's it can be uh, very helpful just for everybody even you know if you're not a therapist everyone to mm-hmm. kind of know some ideas right if somebody mm-hmm. tells you that they're feeling really down right now they're feeling really sad just to come up with some things to do in the meantime while we get you some additional support you know mm-hmm. so I do want to reiterate that Um, I'm encouraging people to call a friend or call a family member. But if you are that friend or family member or coworker or, or, you know, Mm -hmm. someone that they know, it is not your job to be their therapist. You should not. And like, it definitely uh, should not be their, their therapist or hold any of those secrets for people. If they tell you like, I have a secret and I've been feeling suicidal. Um, That's not something that we want uh, to encourage you to do. In those situations, it's it's really important that you get them some help. You know, so mm-hmm. I, I might say, you know, I, I can't be the only person that knows this. That's really heavy and I'm not trained for that, right? That's what, that's my response. You know, even though I am trained, I would say like, I can't be your therapist if this is my friend, mm-hmm. right? I would say, but why don't I support you in getting some help in this way we can call 988 together we right. can you know we can do these things i can drive you somewhere and these are the ways that i can support you i can be that person that you call and i'll mm-hmm. give you a reminder of the things that that you can you know your checklist of things that feel good to you so mm-hmm. 
it's it's really important to make sure that you're not becoming their only resource, their only tool, only you know, uh, person out there. Right, and I think I think you're going to go. You're going into that normalization too of like of being able to say, oh, this is too much for me, but I want to get you help, and I want to. I'll, I'm here together to you know get on the phone with you or you know, drive you somewhere if you need to go somewhere. So I think that's a, um, I think the more we talk about, the more we, we recognize, like, these are thoughts that a lot of people are having, that they've, you know, research has shown it's, 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 it's more normal than, than we knew. I think before there was so much shame around it, that was like, almost like this othering that would happen of like, oh, there, there's a suicidal group over there. And now we're understanding that um, they're all among us, they're with us, their friends, their families, their colleagues. Um, and that um, one of the things I thought of was that idea of like the brain having a back door or an escape route or exit sign, I've heard it called, meaning if you are getting overwhelmed, let's say you're having a really difficult time at work and maybe things at home are really tricky as well, that the brain will start to think of ways out. And that is yeah. one of the signs uh, to look for. And I think if we start looking at things as signs and clues, we're a little better off because we're not like then thinking, oh, there's something so terribly wrong around, about me. It's more of, oh, there's something's going on. There might be yeah. something here for me to notice or to get help or support around. Um, do you want to say anything, yeah. like add anything there? Because I just, I think that's so important that, back door um yeah looking at it idea. from a little bit of a third party perspective trying mm -hmm. not to judge your own thoughts you know we we might jump to certain conclusions at different times and i mean the world is going to judge us but why do we have to judge ourselves right we're our own worst mm -hmm. critics at, mm -hmm. oftentimes so just being able to step back and say oh okay i'm having these thoughts they happen and mm -hmm. and that's okay it's okay that they, they do happen. Now let me do something about it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so again, right here would be a place where if, if that's happening to somebody that's listening or happening to somebody that, you know, you can call 988 anytime and really just have a conversation with them. You can just say, I'm, I want to gather some information or I'm, I'm feeling this way. I'm not sure what to do. Uh, there's trained professionals that are available to us. Uh, 24 seven. Um, yeah. So we really and don't have to stay in it alone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to just jump to, Oh, we're going to call 911. First of all, they don't, if right. they don't have your information, then what would that do? Right. So it's really just somebody to talk to. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a phone call. I know you can also text 741 741. Okay. I know it doesn't sound like it's enough numbers, but you can text help to 741 741 oh, and right. you can text back and forth with with a trained professional as well right because i know not everybody feels comfortable um making a phone call or, you know for whatever Great reason point. If, mm -hmm. and if there's like people around you don't want people to hear you can text um mm -hmm. but i've done this before like i have sent that text with clients before and it's been just a, a test run you know, so we'll, we'll do this at different times. Like if somebody has ever mentioned to me that they've had these thoughts, we'll say, okay, well, I, I want to practice texting this number with you just so that you can get the feel for that. And you can do that out there. Anyone can do it. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to Good wait idea. until that moment just to see like what would happen if mm -hmm. I text this number, they respond automatically right they they right. set you connect you to a trained professional but they'll also give you resources they um they kind of walk you through these coping skills that maybe you can try if you're having these thoughts and like all these different situations right mm -hmm. and of course they they will do everything possible to to help you stay safe mm -hmm. yeah and i think the that speaks to taking some of the shame out of it too, is when we, when we just get a little bit of information, it can really help with the process. I think mm -hmm. sometimes there's the stuckness of what to do and then not really 
really taking, having the little bit of courage to say, okay, I'm going to just make this call or I'm going to make this text and see. Um, so I really love how you did that with your clients. I think that was, that's such a brilliant move because then they have the sensation in the body of I've done this before. Cause sometimes that's it too. You know, we, we spend so much time in our heads. We're not enough in the body. And I think when we have those experiences of safety and of like, okay, here I am, there's somebody with me. I'm going to Texas number, see how that feels. And then even if you get a little relief of somebody just saying, I hear you, um, I, it sounds like it's really tough what's happening or giving you some, some resources can make the body feel uh, more relaxed, more at ease. Um, and then yeah. we can, we can call on that again. We can say, oh yeah, okay, I've already done this. I can, I can do it again. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, that's something that anyone can do, right? As a coworker, as a friend, you can also text that number and say, hey, you know, I don't really know what to do. My friend or coworker is saying these things. And in the ideal situation, that person that has those feelings would be texting or would be making the call. So I would encourage them to do it first. But if okay. they can't and, and are in a position where they, they just don't feel up to doing that, then you can also send the text you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's free. So I can say in that text message, like, this is what's happening. Uh, what can I do? And then they can give you the resources too. And you can point your friend in the right direction. So mm -hmm. oh, that's a, that's a great, that's a really good uh, reminder. Um, yeah. So then speaking of like going to the friends and going to like the colleagues, if we're, we have somebody we're working with, I just want to remind people too, that listening is really helpful. Like that is mm -hmm. really a big part of it. Like, even if you're able to say to somebody, I see you're upset and be able to listen to what they say. Um, mm -hmm. Again, going to Yesenia, you had made such a good point. Like you're not somebody's therapist. So we encourage everyone to take care of themselves. Um, and also if you can listen, if you start to feel overwhelmed, just notice like, oh, I'm getting overwhelmed that this person has so much going on. And, you know, you can use that to direct you of whether or not, okay, now might be a good time for us to call so for some support, but just really mm -hmm. listening, just knowing that listening matters and makes a difference to people. Yeah, not jumping to say things like, oh, but you have so much to live for. You know, those are common things that we might hear and they're not really comforting. So let's just listen and maybe validate, right? And validate what that person is feeling I don't know what you're feeling I don't think anyone knows what anyone is feeling right even right. if I tell you you don't really know what I'm feeling so if somebody's saying that they feel a certain way simply saying wow that feel that sounds really sad really hurtful really whatever the, the feeling is that they share right that sounds really frustrating really difficult and then you can try to help with some support some resources uh, mm -hmm. but listening first validating and mm -hmm. getting them connected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are all so good. They're so good. And I think we're learning that more and more. I think a lot of people who are um, on social media talking about like the power of um, not only listening and validating, but just, just showing, just being present for people, just like acknowledging like, oh, you're in pain. Cause oftentimes we, we don't want to acknowledge that within ourselves or with others. We, it's, it's, it's difficult, but we're, I think more and more, we're having more awareness of like, oh yeah, it, it sounds really painful. Sound yeah. uh, I can be right here with you right now. Um, mm -hmm. I can only and, imagine what that would feel like. Right. Like those are right. like those statements. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, the other thing I think um, we could debunk here is that idea is like, if we say the word suicide, somebody is going to, um, we're going to put the idea in their head. Like mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're afraid to say it. And I think if somebody's indicating that they might hurt themselves, whether they're making a statement of, I don't want to be here anymore. This is too hard. I can't do this. Um, that if we directly ask them, are you thinking of hurting yourself? Um, there's this idea that we're going to put it in their minds, but we know now that that's just, that's not true. Yeah, it's um, so not true. And, right. and I think what people tend to do, if you do ask them that question and they're not feeling suicidal, mm -hmm. they're just feeling really down, but they're not feeling suicidal. Right. So that they'll say, no, no, no. Like they'll, they'll 
they'll correct they'll definitely, you. Yeah, they'll right. definitely correct you and say, <laughs> right. no, I, I just feel really this, or I, you know, I feel mm -hmm. these other things, but no, I'm not, you know, and, and they kind of might even get a little frustrated or, you know, be a little annoyed that you ask them, but over, overall, it's better to ask mm -hmm. and just make sure that they can be safe, that they can keep themselves safe versus not asking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what about a safety plan? Like let's, I mean, safety plans are really good thing for all of us to know about because mm -hmm. um, they found that these, act, these do work, that when we make a safety plan with somebody and I, I kind of underline the fact that we don't want anyone to feel that they're a therapist or that they're, it's, it's your job, but that it is a way to, to, to help somebody to know, like, do you agree that if you get overwhelmed like this, again, you'll call 988 or call or go to your local hospital or call for help, um, kind of outlining that um, idea with people instead of like leaving them without anything. It's like a safety plan really does help just to say, to kind of name it like, oh, you know, this might happen again. And if it does, will you call this number? I think the biggest thing, at least for me, when I think of like a safety plan, what it seems more like is a, is a map, is a guide, okay. right? Like, mm -hmm. so that I don't have to think in those moments of crisis, like I can't think in those moments of crisis, right? So I can just look at this guide, this map that I wrote out, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it's really like a list of, or like a checklist of things that I should do if I am feeling this way. Now that list, that guide can have coping skills on it too. Like next time I feel overwhelmed and this is for anyone, you know, you're not mm -hmm. feeling suicidal, you, but you, have you ever felt depressed? You know, have you ever mm -hmm. felt anxious? Okay, let's look at my list. Next time I feel anxious, this mm -hmm. is what I'm going to try. And then I don't have to remember well, what was it that they said in, in that, you know, Instagram right. video? What was right. it that, that was right. suggested? There's no way in the world you're ever going to find that video in that moment of crisis, right? That's so right. let's just pull out your phone, make a little note, and write a list of the things that you should try, the things that you feel good doing, things mm -hmm. that, you know, might help you get distracted. And then also add to that list, what are some resources, right? Okay, 988. 741741. These are like, you know, the, the different options. Also the people that you might call. Right, Sometimes right. we even forget about the people, like who are the people that said they would be there for me, right? Mm -hmm. Even though they're your closest network of, of people, but we might forget just because mm -hmm. we're in a moment of crisis and that's not where our brain is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we know that when we're in crisis, our, our prefrontal cortex shuts down. So that's our thinking, dreaming brain. And it, I think it's really important. I, I bring it up in most of the talks we've had because I think once people start to realize like, oh, my, my brain will actually shut down this part that would have like said, oh yeah, that's right. The last time I felt this way, I felt better doing X, Y, and Z. But we yeah. forget because our, our brain's kind of gone offline and it's gone into survival mode and we're literally just, um, in that survival. So going back to where we were at the beginning about having awareness, it's mm -hmm. so like meditation is one of those things that's not really helpful until you get more information until you can build some small awarenesses in your, in your everyday practice, which is like, oh, I know that like for myself, I know if I lose sleep and skip a meal, I'm in trouble. Like I have to, you know, I really know, notice a difference. And I had, I had to learn that over time. I had to say, okay, I'm really um, better and able to face my day when I'm fortified or when I've, you know, gotten enough rest or whatever. So that awareness piece is so important. And I like what you're saying here. So like if somebody's listening to us right now and they're in a relatively calm state, they can pull out their phone and make a list of resources, things that work for them, things that worked in the past. Um, I think, and like you said, the resources of 988, of course, and the text number um, 741741, is that right? Yeah, you would text help to 741741. Okay, I'll make sure I yeah. put that in the notes too, that's great. 
you know, these are things like if you're if you're out there making a list or thinking about doing this, I would add on there things that you might want to try on a day where you are feeling a little more energized, right? So that you can build up this list. And I would include different things. I, I mean, this is something that you can do even if you're just trying uh, trying to find a new hobby, right? Like different days are, are going to mean different energy levels. So, yeah. you know, maybe today I have enough energy to go for a bike ride and tomorrow I don't really have that amount of energy. So it might mean just spending an extra like few minutes doing my skincare routine or, you know, mm -hmm. like I might be able to just like paint my nails at home or, you know, just really making different lists depending on uh, your energy levels. Mm -hmm. So the tools that I used today may not be the same tools that I'll want to use tomorrow. And that's why it's important to have multiple things on there. Oh, that's a great reminder. Thank you, Yesenia. No. Good discussion. Thank you so much for having this conversation with us. So we hope it, we hope it inspires some people to learn more and hope and get the help that they need if that's what they need. Um, and just reminding everybody, we're here. We're the Will Rogers Motion Picture Pioneers Foundation. You can reach out to us anytime that we can be helpful to you. Um, Yesenia, do you have any final thoughts you want to leave us with before we go? Yeah, you know, sometimes the basics is, is the most important thing. So just remember that when things do feel overwhelming, try not to overwhelm yourself further by you know, engaging in new things, go back to the basics. Mm -hmm. Did I, did I eat? Did I sleep? Did I move my body and drink water? Mm -hmm. Those are great. I really, I really appreciate you bringing that into the conversation because I think that's an important piece for all of us to remember that there are, we have more control than we think. Mm -hmm. I really believe that. Um, well, this is our, yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so this is our intermission program. We're so happy you joined us here and we hope to see you again soon. And thanks again, Yesenia. We look forward to talking to you again. Happy to be here. Thank you. Okay, bye for now.